very welcome here today to the Science Gallery for uh, Science Week. Um, we're on what day? Four, five, six, Thursday today. So uh, we're nearly at the end of the week of uh, Science Week. Um, Sheila and John Kirby are going to be giving a talk on behalf of Sustainable Energy Ireland today. And their talk is entitled Energy, the Challenges and Opportunities. So Sheila and John are both research students um, as part of UCD's uh, Energy Needs Ireland ENI group. So during the course of the presentation, they're going to discuss climate change, renewable energy in Ireland today for the future. So, and another uh, of students from ENI are also going to join them at the talk for the Q&A session afterwards. So make sure you have your questions ready for that. Um, don't forget that you can get more information on science careers at myscienceCareer.ie and of course uh, Science Week information at scienceweek.ie. So uh, without further ado, over to Sheila. Okay, hey guys, how's things? Um, okay, I'm Sheila. I'm a third year mechanical engineering student in UCD. Um, I'm going to speak today about energy, the challenges and the opportunities available in the energy sector. Okay, so firstly, who are SEI? SEI are Ireland's National Energy Agency. They're responsible for the promotion and assistance in the development of sustainable energy. They have programs for all sectors, the business sector and for homeowners. And SEI have education programs for primary and secondary school students like yourself. And we have a video later on about the One Good Idea project. Okay, so who are ENI? Um, I was a part of this group who did um, research during the summer, and we looked at Ireland's energy future, and we tried to promote energy awareness amongst the public. We have a number of outputs, which we have on our website, and you can go on to that if you want to later on, have a look at some of our stuff. So where do you guys come in? Many of you do science. Really good, that's cool. Many of you would want to do science in the future, or engineering. Okay. Maybe after today, you might, you might consider science a bit more. You might want to do it in college, OK? There are huge opportunities in the renewable energy sector for science and engineering graduates. And the government are putting huge amounts of money into this area. Engineering and science are really important for a number of reasons. Firstly, Ireland has EU targets to reach as regards energy and carbon emissions. And we need engineers and scientists to help us to meet these targets. Um, engineering and science are really important for our economy as well. If we have um, intelligent and highly skilled engineers and scientists, our economy will improve and develop, and we'll be able to attract multinational companies to Ireland. Um, you might be familiar with the Kyoto Agreement, which is an agreement to try to reduce carbon emissions and to try and stop global warming. However, the Kyoto Agreement is going to come to an end at the end of this year, so there's plans to have a Copenhagen Treaty, which will promote um, further carbon dioxide um, reduction and try and help the uh, global warming issue. OK, so I'm going to talk about fossil fuels. I'm sure you all know what fossil fuels are. I'll go through them quickly. What are they? They're non-renewable sources of energy. They're formed over millions of years from dead plants and animals. Um, animals die and the plants die and their remains are compressed under intense heat and pressure over millions of years and they're turned into fossil fuels. Fossil fuels can be burned and um, they, when they're burned they react with the oxygen in the air to create carbon dioxide. Um, the first uh, fossil fuel we're going to look at is coal. There's about 100 years of coal left in the world. Coal is very carbon intensive, which means it gives out a lot of carbon dioxide when it's burned. Gas, there's about 40 to 50 years of gas left. Gas is a bit cleaner than coal, not much cleaner, but it is cleaner. It doesn't give out as much carbon dioxide when it's burned. Heat is Ireland's only indigenous source of fossil fuels. It's very carbon intensive, which means it gives out a lot of carbon dioxide when it's burned. Oil is very important but we only have about 40 years of it left. So what do we use fossil fuels for? For electricity generation. We burn the fossil fuels and we use the heat to create steam, which turns turbines, which in turn generates electricity. The in transport for our planes, for our cars. We use it in heating our homes and our buildings. And we use it for creating things like plastics and chemicals used in medicine. But why are they harmful? 
They contain an element called carbon. And when this carbon burns, it reacts with the oxygen in the air. We have carbon dioxide. Now, this is the greenhouse effect. I'm sure you all know what it is. Basically, what happens is the sun's energy comes to the atmosphere and it heats the earth. Some of the energy gets caught in the atmosphere, and this helps to keep a nice temperature around the world, um, which helps promote life. However, as more and more carbon dioxide is emitted into the atmosphere, um, there's an enhanced greenhouse effect, which is causing global warming. Okay, some of the evidence of global warming. Surface temperatures rise, which causes the ice caps to melt. As a result of this, sea levels can rise. If temperatures continue to rise, we might have longer droughts, which has an effect on plants and animals and can lead to starvation. There's been evidence over the last few decades that storms and hurricanes are increasing in intensity, getting stronger, the wind speeds are getting stronger, we have more rain. It's all signs of global warming. Okay, if global warming wasn't good enough reason to reduce our dependency, here are a few more reasons. Fossil fuel reserves are depleting. As I mentioned earlier, we only have about 100 years of coal left. We only have about 40 years of gas and oil. Added to this, we have population growth. At the moment, population is about 6 billion people. However, in the next 40 years, it's going to grow to about 9 billion. With growing population, we have growing energy demand. We need more energy to heat the homes, to power our cars, and to make electricity. Now, this is a very important issue. It's called the security supply issue. Um, if we're getting fossil fuels from foreign countries, they have to be imported. And if there's a disruption to those imports, we don't have much energy. Here we can see Ireland on the left-hand side of the photograph. And the red lines indicate the pipelines. These pipelines are importing gas from across Europe. Most of our gas will probably come from Russia. And if this is disrupted, we won't get any gas, won't be able to make electricity. At present, Ireland uses about 98% um, fossil fuels for every piece of energy generated. Oh, so, yeah, for energy generated. Um, this isn't a great idea. Um, we have very few indigenous sources in Ireland, so we need to import from other countries. As a result of this, we're very, very vulnerable to changing fossil fuel prices. So what must Ireland do? We need to reduce our dependency on fossil fuels. We can do this by generating electricity from renewables and from low carbon alternatives. We need to improve energy efficiency in buildings. We can do this by insulating our, ho our homes, our attics, and by being more energy aware. We need to start diversifying um, transport from petrol and diesel. We might be able to use um, electric vehicles. So what is Ireland doing? As I mentioned earlier, we have 2020 targets to meet. These are EU targets. We need to see if we can get electricity generation from renewables, about 40%. We need to reduce our carbon emissions by 20%. We need to increase energy efficiency in our homes. And we need to see if we can get more electric vehicles onto the roads. We need to upgrade our grid. The grid is the transmission for electricity. So it's the pylons and the overhead cables. And we have um, plans to build an interconnector, which is just a big cable under the ocean, connecting Ireland to England. And this will enable us to import and export electricity. So I'm going to hand it over to John now, who's going to speak about alternatives. Hello, uh, my name is John Kirby, and I'm also an um, engineering student in UCD. I'm an electrical engineering student and I was a member of Energy Needs Ireland as well. So as Sheila mentioned to you, uh, we need to get away from using fossil fuels and uh, we need to move to more cleaner and sustainable sources of energy. So this involves change in every sector from what powers our cars, what heats our homes, and to what generates elect our electricity. So uh, if any of you do decide to go on and study science or engineering at the third level, uh, you'll, you'll have to get familiar with renewable energy and climate change because it's very important now. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is electricity. So I'm not sure if you're, if, you're, um, if you're sure how electricity is produced, but basically there's three criteria needed. So you need a magnet surrounded by a, a coil of wire 
and relative motion between the two. And if three, three criteria are met, electricity will be produced in the wire. So um, wind energy next. Wind energy will be um, very important in the next couple of years because we have a target of 40% of our electricity generated from renewables. So much of this target will be met with wind energy. So you'll see wind turbines around the country and you're going to see a lot more of them. Um, wind energy comes from the sun. So the sun heats the earth and it heats the surface at different, at different ranges. So what happens is certain parts are heated more than others and warm air will rise and then the cold air will be sucked in and thus wind, wind will be formed. And this energy then can be used to turn turbines. So the blades of the wind turbine will cause the motion, as I mentioned a couple of slide backs. Uh, so the, the motion uh, which turns the magnet inside of the coil, this is caused with the turning of the blades. And so electricity then will be produced in the wire. Uh, from this map here is a map of Europe and it shows the wind speeds and the purple and red zones are the areas of the highest wind speeds. And so you can see Ireland is absolutely ideally located to avail of this energy. Um, one issue with wind is that the west of Ireland is the purple, see the purple region. And so that's the area where wind blows the strongest. Um, the problem with that is that the main demand load centre for electricity in Ireland, so Ireland, uh, the electricity is needed most in Dublin, which is on the east coast. And so transmission lines will need to be built across the country to transport the power from the wind turbines. And wind is now a mature technology, so it's uh, very important. Uh, from this picture, you can see the size of these, these blades. Uh, they really are enormous. And uh, you can see the, the complicated engineering that would have had to go into to design this blade to maximize its efficiency. Uh, blades can be up to 80 meters in diameter. Uh, they really are huge. Uh, this is another diagram here. It's the tower on which it supports the, the blades. And uh, I'm not sure how familiar you are with them, but if you're ever close to a wind turbine, Despite their size, they're really quiet, you'd hardly even hear them. Um, so I'm going to talk about ocean energy next. Ocean energy, you mightn't be very familiar with it because it's not something you'd see. But some really exciting developments taking place in the ocean at the moment. 70% uh, of the Earth's surface is covered with, with ocean. And it's a vast source of energy. And it's largely untapped at the moment. Um, there's two ways of extracting the energy from the ocean. We can use the waves or we could use tidal. And once again, Ireland is uh, ideally located as it has the Atlantic Ocean to the west coast. And you can see here the, a map of the waves coming up towards Ireland. It's a wave energy. So we have to harness the energy from the waves. Uh, these are still in the development stages at the moment. Uh, but there's a couple of different dev devices out there that can, can, can achieve this. So on the left here you have a palamus. It's like, it's, this is called a sea snake. It's a palamus device. And this uses the uh, motion of the, of the wave to extract energy and produce electricity. And over here, this is Wave Bob's device, and this is a floating device. And this has a very clever mechanism. Um, it's able to use the bob in motion uh, to change it into electricity. See, over here now, we have a small version of this. It's just in the, in the tank. It's just a small scale model of how it works. Um, tidal energy uses the energy of tides coming in and tides coming out. And it's able to um, tra transform this energy into electricity. Um, tides then are a result of the moon's pull on the Earth. And they are regular and predictable. So an advantage with tidal energy, as opposed to wind energy or wave energy, is that you pretty much know what kind of energy you're going to get out of the tides. Whereas with wave energy or wind energy, there's going to be days when the seas are calm. There's going to be days when the wind isn't blowing. And so the energy from these sources is going to be very small. Um, so with tidal, you can pretty much predict what you're going to get from it. It's in development stages. It also shows the importance of having a good uh, mix of generating technologies. You must generate electricity from a couple of different sources. Uh, now I'm going to talk about solar energy. And this is energy which comes directly from the sun. And again, it can be harnessed in two ways. So on the left here, this is, um, these are uh, solar panels which are used to heat water. And of the solar panels that you'll see around Ireland on houses, the majority of them will be this type. So this type contains tubes with fluid in them. And the, the sun heats the fluid in, in these tubes. And these are transported in. The fluid then is moved to the, the point of use, and um, it can be used to heat water. The other type is photovoltaic solar panels. And these are of limited use in Ireland due to the lack of sunshine. Um, but um, they can generate electricity directly from the sun. Um, Ireland does have better solar energy resource than is realized. Much of our hot water needs can be met with solar. 
Uh, even on a cloudy day, uh, the sun, enough sunlight will pass through the clouds to be able to heat the water. And now I'm going to talk about hydro energy. So hydro energy uses the potential energy of water. The main electricity, the hydroelectric power plant in Ireland is in Ardner Crusha in County Clare. And uh, this has a purpose-built canal feeding onto the River Shannon. Uh, it was built in 1929, and uh, back then it could power the whole of uh, Ireland's energy, or Ireland's electricity needs, just this power plant. And this then is Turlock Hill in, in County Wicklow. So what you have here is you have two reservoirs, an upper and a lower reservoir. And uh, this is an example of electricity storage, because during the day when demand is high for electricity, people need electricity, there's a hidden turbine underneath this the upper, upper dam, upper uh, lake of water. And this water then is allowed to flow through the turbine, produce electricity, and uh, it flow down into the lower lake. And at night time then, when most people are asleep in bed and there's very little need for electricity, this water can be pumped back up to the upper reservoir. And so just to basic, to go through the generation of electricity from this way, the water starts off with high potential energy. It then changed to kinetic energy, flows down and passes through a turbine and is producing electricity. So it's changed to electric energy. And electric energy is the most useful form of energy we have. Um, now I'm just going to talk about geothermal energy. So geothermal energy is energy stored in the earth. Um, there's two sources of this. There's the source of the sun. So the sun can be used uh, to heat the earth's crust. And the earth's crust acts as insulator. Uh, so you can see here, this is a, can be used for domestic heating. So what you need to do is you need to pull pipes, build pipes down underneath the ground. They could go down to depths of maybe 100 meters. And um, they have a heat pump which transports this uh, heat that's already in the ground into your home. And for the amount of electricity you put in, you get a much more heat out. There's also grants available from SEI for homeowners who wish to do this. Um, Geothermal heat can also be used to, for, for uh, electricity production, but you need to drill down to much uh, uh, lower depths. You must go down to maybe three kilometers down below the surface to access this. And this is using the energy of the Earth's core. So uh, temperatures exceeding the temperatures on the surface of the sun are found at this depth. And then what happens is the heat is used to create steam, and the steam will turn turbines and produce electricity. Uh, Bioenergy is energy stored in plant and other biological material. So plants go through a process known as photosynthesis. So what happens is they use sunlight and carbon dioxide to produce energy. This energy then can be burned. These, these plants can be burned and energy will be released for our use. Alternatively, plants can be processed and used to drive, uh, used to drive biofuels, what they're known as. And these can be used for transport. So the oil is got from the plant and it can be used in aviation or to power cars, maybe in the future. Uh, one of the issues with bioenergy is that you require a lot of land to grow the, enough crops to produce uh, a suitable amount of energy. So uh, a lot of research is going on at the moment to, gene to develop genetically modified crops. I'm not sure if you've heard of it, but what happens is it changes the DNA of the crops uh, to allow them to produce a much greater yield. And uh, if this is successful and is allowed to be implemented in Ireland, it could be a possible source of energy in the future. And I'm going to finally finish up with nuclear energy. So nuclear energy uses stored potential energy in atoms. You'll probably, when you think of nuclear energy, everyone will probably think of the Chernobyl disaster. Um, but the probability of that happening today is, is uh, much less. It's is practically, uh, it's, it's not going to happen because modern day power plants are much safer. And um, they're fission, they use fission reaction. So what you have is you have a big atom and it's uh, split into two smaller atoms. And the main fuel is uranium-235. It's now a mature technology, and it's uh, used all over the world. Um, in fact, France produces 80% of its electricity from nuclear power. 